Miss Emma Hardinge The Winter Soirees Harley Street, London 1866 How are direct writing and drawing done by an invisible agency when none of these materials are at hand? When you produce drawings with the aid of the materials which your senses can apprehend where do those materials come from? They are manufactured by yourselves. Out of what? Why, even of the self-same elements that furnish invisible spirits with their materials. The very pencil which your eye discerns and your fingers clasp was once in the atmosphere. The ink and pen were once portions of the unorganized ether around you, and these, by the gradual processes of growth, through organic life have assumed visible shape and form, and become substances appropriate to your use. Now if you possessed knowledge enough of chemistry, to organize in a sufficiently rapid period of time the various unorganized elements around you, you could produce from the invisible world of elemental life, even from thin air or finer ether, every form of creation that is visible to your eyes. The unparticle elements of all being are in part here in this very chamber, and in the invisible world, which ignorance calls nothing, vulgar parlance air, and science gas, vapour and electricity, are held in solution all the elements of organic life. I repeat, if it be possible for chemistry to produce in a measurably short space of time that which nature's chemistry produces in simply a longer period of time, why should not better chemists than men, even spirits of men, who in the realm of spiritual science becoming acquainted with nature's secret methods, can imitate them in very rapid periods of time, transcend man's chemistry, and perform its operations more rapidly than yourselves. Spirit embodied has sufficient power to compound substances by chemistry. Have not spirits disembodied the same knowledge with perhaps added powers? The action of men require for the exhibition of their transformations in matter, time and space that of the spirits is independent of both, but both act through chemistry and force upon matter through laws known to both. But admitting all the possibilities for the action of the spirit, independent of time and space, which yourselves claim in time and space, you have the simple modus operandi by which all materials could be produced, namely by the various transformations of matter through the three stages of solid, fluid, and invisible gas. There are many modes in which, by spirit control, occult phenomena are affected, and we do not find that spirits ever make use of one mode alone. In the various degrees of influence by which magnetism operate upon what are termed trance speakers, there are so many peculiar varieties that one scarcely forms any illustration of another. Even so, in the production of spirit writings without visible agency, one of the ordinary modes by which they are produced is this. There must be given off, either from the substances connected with the local surroundings 
where they are produced, or from some persons present, an aroma or magnetic essence that enables the spirit to condense around himself an earthly atmosphere. This affected and clothed, as it were, in fine and sublimated matter, highly charged with magnetism, spirit can readily control matter. Spiritual electricity is far finer when disembodied than when embodied. When controlling spirits have gathered up sufficient animal magnetism to act upon the elements of matter, they can remove any substances that are subject to their magnetism into their own atmosphere, and they then become invisible. In all the various phenomena of stone-throwing, or the projection of missiles or objects, suddenly produced before the eyes of a circle, you will find that such movements are not made with the same amount of momentum that would seem to be requisite to bring the object in its place. Those familiar with the phenomena of moving substances brought or thrown by spirits will remember that they always appear as if they were softly laid or dropped before you. They suddenly appear visible to your eyes. They are not passed through the atmosphere, obviously with the same amount of force that they would be produced by projecting them with the momentum of the animal body. This is a fact which all familiar with the phenomena of the spirit circle will bear witness to. How is this affected? The spirit, enveloped by the earthly animal magnetism, removes within his own atmosphere the various substances he is about to use. So long as they remain in his atmosphere, they are invisible to your eyes, as much as the spiritual world, which fills this chamber, is invisible to your sense of mortal sight. And yet the spirit world is actually here, and permeating this natural world. You assert in the scientific systems, which you call natural philosophy, that all atoms in space are matter. You acknowledge that a vast amount of matter exists in the atmosphere that is invisible to you. Can you not also conceive of particles yet finer than any that have been discovered? Can you question that there must be an ultimate condition of atoms finer than any as yet known to science? Reason suggests this, spirits affirm it, and therefore it is that they may also affirm within the range of your comprehension, that this very chamber is full of the spirit world, its landscapes, scenery, and inhabitants. In fact, that the whole realm of matter is vitalized by a spirit world invisible to you, because you only look through the eyes of materiality, and can therefore only behold material objects. It requires a spiritual eye to take cognizance of the realm of spirit and spiritual beings. Therefore, in order to make present tangible and visible to your eyes that which they produce from their own atmosphere, they must pass it from their world into yours. So long as they operate upon it within their world, it is invisible because it is immersed in the invisible atmosphere of spirit land, and so the great majority of spirit writings, performed without visible agency, are absolutely being outwrought by stances similar to those formed in your world. 
that is by the same pencils, ink, paper, and various materials, borrowed from yourselves, rendered temporarily invisible, and so either returned or suddenly produced before your eyes, when the conditions of the medium power enables the spirit to present them. This is one mode, and another is that which I have before alluded to, namely in the rapidity of chemical operations which enable spirits to gather up from the atmosphere such elements and forces as are needful for their purposes. Although they have not arrived at that condition of chemical knowledge that enables them to render the substances they use permanent, they are still sufficiently material to prove that they possess weight, density, impenetrability, and other of the attributes of matter. All these assertions need the evidence of those who are familiar with the phenomena. When you have observed these, you will find that there is an invariability about them corresponding to that which I have stated, and all resolve themselves at last into the power of the spiritual man to do something more in science than can be effected in analogous modes by the natural man. But for the peculiar phenomena named in your question, the two modes referred to are those most commonly used for their production.